Hello, I'm Neil Moninger. I'm the Product Manager for Verification IP here at Synopsys. And I'm here with Bernie DeLay, who's the Director of R&D for Verification IP. Bernie was a key driver of our System Verilog architecture for Verification IP and more recently has been driving the architecture for protocol-based compliance test suites. So today he's going to share a little bit of his insights about how that architecture works, how it's put together and the benefits it's going to bring to our customers. Great, thanks Neil. Okay, as Neil said, I, you know, basically in a previous chalk talk we talked about our System Verilog and UVM based VIP. So today what I'm talking about is actually our test suite architecture. Maybe not surprisingly, we took some of the same basic approaches here on our test suites. We've developed it all in System Verilog in UVM, okay? But the key difference here is we deliver our test suites in source code. What that enables us to do then is actually allow you to have better visibility into what's going on. It's a more highly reusable environment and allows debug and reuse to happen much, much simpler. So let me go into a few more of the details of how actually it's put together architecturally here. Um, as I said, this is our system Verilog based VIP here. In this case, I'm showing you a USB environment. The design under test happens to be a USB device. Okay, so here's our design under test here. Here's our USB device in the right lower right hand corner of it. On this side, we actually have our USB host VIP, or more correctly, our USB VIP configured as a host on it. As I explained last time, it is architected exactly as you'd expect for a USB VIP. It has a stacked layered protocol implementation, it has sequencers, it has uh, a top level agent, etc. So basically, in this architecture, you need to look at also not just what is on the USB side, but what is also on the other side of your USB device. In this case, it's going to be something on that application side like AXI, AHB, some sort of bus-based protocol. Okay? So in this particular case, what we've shown here is an AXI implementation. We basically have our AXI masters and slaves that hook up to your USB device. If you had a different protocol, like AHB or a combination of protocols, this would be changed to be AHB uh, or OCP or whatever would be applicable in your particular case on it. Your USB device probably has a register set associated with it. So the way we chose to implement this bus side is we actually use uh, a RAL model, or more correctly for UVM, a REG model out there to drive our AXI VIP. That way if your register map changes, which it probably will with your particular USB device, uh, you can easily change that re register map file and still be able to reuse what is next, a lot of the device driver. So basically that device driver drives your register model, which drives the AXI side, and it's pushing into, in this case, the USB device, and probably reading the transfers and resultant actions that happen with your USB VIP out there. Also included in this overall environment then is naturally scoreboarding. Okay, that's the thing that validates whether that USB transfer went into your device correctly, and we read the correct thing out the AXI side. You'd have functional coverage, or more correctly, the functional coverage that is implemented in the VIP that allows you to see how much sti stimulus you've actually done, along with system level checks out there. Between the two, so basically you have USB on this side and really AXI over here, you have virtual sequencers controlling and coordinating the activity between the two sides out there. Okay? The tests themselves actually utilize test sequences. Again, if you remember my last talk, we heavily use UVM sequences in our overall approach. And in this case, we do the same thing. So the tests themselves are fairly thin, and they utilize a lot of built-in test sequences, either at the test suite level or embedded within the VIP itself in our sequence collections for both USB and for AXI out there. Okay. Like I said, this whole thing is implemented in open source, so that allows you to take what looks like now a very block-level centric view of the world. So what I show here would probably use for USB device IP verification, but since it's open source, you can also extend it into the SOC level. Okay? You'd be able to reuse these test sequences here. You might have this AXI on the other side of maybe an interconnect model in order to validate this at the SOC level. Might want, not want to do all the tests in that case, you may be only doing the interconnect toggle type tests in the SOC level. But the main point is, is this base environment test suite should be applicable both to block level verification and SOC level verification, allow you to very effectively reuse it. Also, since this is open system Verilog and the VIP already hooked up to things like the protocol analyzer, debug is very nice. You debug it exactly the way you would expect to debug a test bench if you were developing it yourself again. Okay? 
In our case, we believe that you need both a series of directed and constrained random tests. Each one has their own applicability, and we feel that's the most rapid way to get complete coverage of the protocol specification. And you're probably using a verification plan that gets delivered with our test suites, okay, to indicate whether or not you've covered everything in the protocol specification. So again, this is our overall architecture. We chose to open it to uh, implement it in System Verilog and UVM, just like our base VIP. We deliver it as source code to make it easy for you to use, reuse, and debug. So thank you, and uh, if you want to find out more about our VIP, go to synopsis.com/vip.